So a lot of people ask, um, you know, why ex-Mormons can't leave the church alone? And this is a valid question, and I do mean to give uh, the best answer I can. And this answer is not meant to uh, apply to all ex-Mormons. People leave the church for various reasons, and it's not even meant to be an extensive list of the reasons why I left the church or why I as Mormons like to say, can't leave the church alone. As I was a Mormon, I heard this all the time, that you know people can leave the church, but they can't leave the church alone. Well, I'd like to explain at least one reason why I find that I still like to discuss the Mormon church. Well, I mean, one reason, real quick, I'll say, this isn't the main one, one reason is that I have feelings for the church that I've engendered that, you know, that have been instilled in me uh, all throughout my childhood and all throughout my life until last year. And uh, these are feelings that you can't really just cast aside. I mean, it's like you can work at Walmart for 20 years and then quit and not really care that you've left Walmart, not have any feelings for it because you don't really have any feelings for your work, you know. But a, a church is different. But anyway, um, I would like to explain this concept, um, this reason why um, I feel like I can't leave the church alone, so to speak. And I'm going to use the Mormon's favorite teaching method, which is the parable. I give a parable. Imagine that you have a friend, a very good friend, a very kind, close, loyal friend, been friends with you for years. You hang out together, you do things together, you spend time with their family, they spend time with your family, um, and you're very good friends. Uh, you think you think this person is amazing, they're wonderful, they're, they're great, they have all these good qualities, they're good friends, they're fun to be with, you love being with them, you have good times together. Uh, you know, maybe they give you advice when you're in need of advice, you know, maybe that kind of thing that friends do. Um, and then one day you learn, one way or another, somehow you learn that this friend has been molesting your child. What do you do? Well, I mean, I can't speak for you. I can't speak for everybody. But personally, what I would do, first of all, is I would go to this friend. I would go to this friend and I would try to address the concern and be like, uh, you know, I, I believe that you've been molesting my child and, uh, you know, I really think that you need to seek help on this. You know, see a see a psychologist or a therapist, or you know, talk to somebody. And I and I think that um, you need to take care of this problem because it is a problem. Uh, children should not be molested. It could damage them permanently. Um, so I would, that's, that's the first step. I would go to the person directly and I would say, I would address the issue. And then if the person refused to, um, to comply, refused this, said that they didn't have a problem, said that it wasn't something they needed to take care of, said that it was me that had the problem, I was the issue. In that case, um, then I would, then I would go to the authorities, you know, I would report it. I would, you know, I would say this is, this person is dangerous because I would feel I would have the obligation to protect other people in the community, other people um, that are acquaintances with this person. I would feel like it is my duty, knowing something about the matter, to protect other people's children from this possible molester, because it is a danger to have children molested by adults. Um, and so I would, I would do that. I would tell people, um, I would tell the authorities, I would make it known. And I, it wouldn't be like in a gossiping kind of way. It wouldn't be like trying to make this person look bad. I would still probably like this person and still probably think they're a great person, just that they're not good at, you know, <laughs> behaving themselves around children. And that's exactly how I feel about the church. Um, something that I haven't told anybody, uh, well, maybe one or two people up until this point, 
but uh, when a while back, about a year ago, uh, there were some things that I read that Elder Oaks said. Elder Oaks is one of the apostles in the Mormon Church. There were things that I read that Elder Oaks said that I felt were discriminatory toward homosexual people. I, he was telling parents how to treat their homosexual children, and I felt that what he was telling parents to do was basically to discriminate against their own children just because they're gay. So I wrote to him, and I told him exactly how I felt about what he had said, and, and let him know why I felt it was bad. And I was actually, I was entirely surprised to see a response. I don't, I don't know if he wrote it personally. I believe that he did. But maybe one of his secretaries did, or you know, somebody that works for him. I don't know. But I did receive a response. And it said that he stands by what he said before. And in my opinion, this is just like going to a friend and saying, um, look, here's a problem. I think that, you know, you have a problem here and that you need to get help with it. And I don't like your behavior. I don't like what you're doing. And then the friend refusing to comply, refusing, saying, no, I'm, I'm not the one with the problem. You're the one with the problem. In fact, in fact, this is often said in general conference. The leaders of the church will say, and, and, and members will quote it all the time, and they'll say, if you have a problem with one of the leaders of the church, it is your problem, not the leader's problem. The leader is divinely inspired by God and therefore will not lead the membership of the church astray. Therefore, if you have a problem, it is your problem. This is... This is the exact opposite of what the church teaches. The church teaches humility and repentance and acknowledging when you've done something wrong and changing. And the church itself refuses to admit that it has ever been wrong or that it is wrong on anything, on any particular matter at all. And, um, and this is why I feel, you know, the next step, the very next step is to let it be known, to let it be known the list of grievances that I have against the church. And I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do this if it was just, you know, just an innocent church trying to do what it felt was best. Uh, I, I wouldn't have any problem with that. I'd just be like, you know, I don't believe that anymore, and that's okay. Let them do what they like. But they're not content with that. They're not content with staying inside their own church and teaching what they teach inside their own church. They feel like it is necessary to come after people outside of the church. They feel like it is necessary to campaign against gay marriage. They feel like it is necessary to teach the world that their doctrine is true and that everybody else is wrong. Um, and that they, they feel like it is necessary to come after gay people and to make them feel evil and to make them, you know, to tell them they can't get married, that God will get mad at them if they get married. Even, even gay people that are atheists that don't even believe in God. Why should they care whether God's going to get mad at them if they get married? Because according to their own belief, they, God doesn't exist. So, see, this is, this, is my, this is my concern. If the church were willing to leave me alone, I would have no problem with leaving the church alone. There are tons of churches out there that teach their own doctrine and stay inside their own church. And they don't... They don't come out, they don't try to campaign, they're not trying to be a political machine. They just, they just do their own thing and be a community of people trying to be better. And that's great. And if that's all the church, the LDS church did, I don't have a problem with that. No problem at all. But they try to come after me. They try to come after gay people. They try to say we can't get married. They try to say we're not equal citizens. They, they say all sorts of nasty things about us. And... That's not okay. That's not okay. And this is definitely one reason why I can't leave the church alone. They won't leave me alone. Why should I leave them alone? I ask the question, why should I leave the church alone? When all they do is come after me and attack me. That doesn't make sense. Should I just take it? The church doesn't just take it. Why should I? That is not just. That's not right, and I won't stand for it.